Located in southern India, Auroville is a large circle-shaped city five kilometers in diameter. 2,000 people from 43 countries around the world lead a life of harmony and peace. Auroville was built with the aim of achieving human unity. So people from so many cultures and languages and nationalities are working together for the benefit of their future. The area started out as arid wastelands that were transformed into a lush forest during the past 40 years. Research of eco-friendly agricultural techniques and new and renewable energy sources is a part of life in Auroville. Auroville is really an evolutionary city. It's continually changing. Auroville is a field for me a field for progress, a field for growth of consciousness, a field for self-finding, a field for self-development. The Auroville project started as a 100-year plan to create harmony of nature and the human race. It has now presented people living in modern society with an entirely new way of life. It's an experiment in human unity, in intercultural understanding in trying to find a new way of living, a new way of being. It's early morning and the sun isn't up yet. Someone is already up and about. Oh, goodness. <laughs> this week, my responsibility is to wake up all the volunteers. So I wake up at 5.30 and we start work at 6.30. The person in charge of waking the volunteers will do it in their own unique way. The people gathered here came to plant trees in the dry desert. They've come from around the world and they are all volunteers. I've been living in Orville for seven years and uh, five years, a little bit more than five years since we started Southern Forest. In Southern Forest, we work with uh, volunteers from all over the world, from more than 45 countries. Uh, we have 600 uh, volunteers per year that are living with us and working with us. And um, it's, it's really beautiful because uh, this is the vision of Oroville to uh, bring human unity. From early morning today, the volunteers have come to give fertilizer to the trees. There's something they never leave out when they go. Today we're using um, a natural fertilizer from a, a tree called Pongamia pinata. See there's little worms inside, it's so nice, yeah? There's little worms, can you see here? The natural fertilizer and these buckets are transforming Sadana forest into lush greenlands. This is to reduce the amount of CO2 on Earth. They have been working on this project for five years now. We started Sadna Forest five years ago, and uh, it was completely white soil. There was not a piece of grass or any trees. The reason to plant trees is because uh, we're producing a lot of CO2, and somebody has to turn it into an oxygen. The only living organisms that can do it is trees. So we have to plant more trees if you want to survive on this planet. Just the thought that the work they're doing is helping to save the Earth makes the buckets feel lighter. I just enjoy growing things. I like to keep it simple, you know? For me personally, it's not about uh, saving the world or telling people how to live their lives. To me personally, that's how I want to. The buckets are passed around like a relay. It looks as if everyone is connected on both a physical and spiritual level. 
같이 어울려서 일하면서 이곳의 생활 방식 같은 거를 이렇게 음, 몸으로 겪는 거예요. 그러니까 물한 방울이랑 또 남기, 남김없이 쓰는 생활 방식이거든요. 사람들 마음속에 남아서 나중에 자기 나라로 돌아갔을 때도 계속 그런 세, 생활 방식을 어느 정도라도 따라 하려고 하는 게 그게 이곳에서 생활의 가장 큰 보람이 아닐까 남겨가는 게 아닐까 싶어요. Here it's actually happening, so maybe um, the youngsters, there's a lot of people not even 20 here, that that will be good, they'll, in the next 20 years of their life, they'll be able to do much good and maybe help the earth to survive. Aviram Rosin's young daughter always has a great time helping the volunteers. All right, and now I'm going to... Living in harmony with nature seems to bring people closer together as well. This is a great place to meet the people of Oroville, the solar kitchen. This is a community eatery that was built to care for each individual's health, which contributes to the village as a whole. This is why crops grown in Oroville are delivered first to the solar kitchen. Only fresh ingredients are used in the meals provided at the solar kitchen, which are vegetarian. Solar Kitchen was the first uh, community kitchen which was created for the overall of Oroville, for the whole community. That's why it was put rather into the center of Oroville. We are making in the moment around 800 lunches and around 80 dinners. We don't cook any meat, it's uh, vegetarian. That is, I think, the only principle we have. There are 24 farms like this one in Oroville. Various crops including rocket and lettuce are grown here and provided to Orovillians. The Buddha Garden uses eco-friendly sustainable farming to grow their crops. is that I started Buddha Garden in the year 2000, okay? So we've been here nine years. And what you see here is what's been done in nine years. And when I first came, I came completely on my own. You know, working on the land is, is part of our spiritual um, process, you know. And for me, I mean, what happens in the garden is such a reflection of so something that's going on with me. And that's always been the case. You can do all three. Good day. Which one should I do first? Volunteers from around the world put their green thumbs to the test while learning the importance of where their food comes from. I'm interested in a holistic way of life, so I believe what we eat is, um, is really important to our health. And um, I'm really interested in learning about how to grow your own food and how to grow your own food without any chemicals. A Swedish couple has come to volunteer today. You just help with getting it together and everything. Oroville is like an experimental place for finding new ways of life for them. 
Yeah, we decided to go to Arrowville to work and to help with the society, learn some ecological growing. And we have a little bit of the same idea of start our own little Swedish farm when we get home. Basically, we also feel that with the volunteers coming, um, that actually they work with a very good energy. And of course, it also gives them an experience. So, you know, we're not just growing vegetables here, we're also kind of growing ourselves. The organic crops that are harvested in the morning are quickly delivered around Auroville. It is because freshness is key when it comes to food. A portion of the pack crops are taken to Kofu. Whole wheat pasta dangles from the line like decorative streamers. This is the only organic food processing factory in Auroville. Peanut and cashew butter and kombucha, a fermented mushroom tea, are some of the 25 different products manufactured here. They are made with the organic crops grown here in Auroville. Our aim is to promote organic farming. We have kept two main uh, parameters to work is that uh, organ, to use organic ingredients as much as possible. Now 99% of our products contain uh, organic pr uh, produce. And then the next parameter is hygiene because our aim is to promote health and to give health for others. Portu is Auroville supermarket. Kofu products and other groceries produced on the 14 farms are distributed through Portu. Rice, greens, fruit, foodstuffs and the daily staples of life are all on display. For the vegetables and the fruits, the selection is very good. The freshness is very good. Here there is um, uh, concern with ecology and uh, protection of, of the environment, which we are uh, satisfied with. But an interesting thing is, there are no price tags to be found. Aurevillians come shopping at Bortu and take what they need. For many people it's sometimes confusing because we are so used to, to, to simply value everything in terms of money. No? But when you go in your house and you open the cupboard and get whatever you need for food, you don't think of how much it costs. This is the same thing. Money is not exchanged when the items are paid for. The items are weighed and they are purchased directly through one's account. Because we are not paying each, each item. We are paying a bulk, we are crediting a bulk, and then we see at the end of the month whether it is okay or not. We are following up. In Orobel there will not be internal exchange of money. Because the people have to be free from this, this uh, uh, attachment to the money, which is creating so much uh, problems in the world. Auroville provides the world with a new way of life. We visited the center of Auroville. The meditation center, Matrimandir, which started construction in 1970, is much more than a meditation hall for Aurovillians. The Matrimandir is at the center of the Auroville township, physically and spiritually. And in 1970, the mother who started the Oroville project, she had a vision of this place where people would come to concentrate, to learn to concentrate, to sit in silence for meditation,
to look inside, to try to discover their real self. So this is why we are building Machu Mandir. The golden structure is breathtaking and especially popular among guests. I came to the Mantri Mandir because this uh, basically is represents the whole world, the unity of the whole world together. And uh, it's a very beautiful place to meditate inside. India's national tree, the Banyan tree, can be found next to it. The tree's branches spread out and create trunks like roots, making it quite spectacular. This tree, which is little over 100 years old, has served as the spiritual roots of Auroville. This is why many Aurovillians come here to meditate beneath its boughs, a mental resting spot for the village. Now we are only at the beginning, we are laying the foundations of whole Auroville. We want to find new economic systems, new decision-making processes, new psychologically understanding of each other. But we keep going at it. The city of dawn, Auroville, awakens new thoughts and actions. The transformation of Auroville can be seen at the town hall. Beyond nationality, the town hall plans and designs the city layout for universal harmony. The most impressive part of the city's blueprint is the spiral shape. It's fundamentally a universal shape of life force, evolution of life, because this uh, spiral movement convey a very strong energy, an energy of evolutionary life. Now, translating all this into town planning, into a city, into a living body, this is exactly the research and the experimentation which we are here for. The different people in Auroville are great models for photographer Giorgio Molinari from Italy, who settled in Auroville seven years ago. You see, these are, these are the lenses. These are all lenses. This is a lens that has uh, 20 years old. My work here is uh, quite the same work that I made uh, during my life of photographer, architect and children. And the children, you know, all the school here has a lot of uh, wonderful children with a very curious activity and then uh, I think each month I go from one school to the other to make some pictures for them. His main job these days is to digitize, restore and archive the old photos of Auroville. This process is necessary to allow people to explore Auroville's past. I think that becoming Aurovillian, the first idea is to make for Auroville what you are able to do. My work was the photography, and then I was enjoying to make pictures for all the people, and like that. Just like other Aurovillians, Molinari contributes to Auroville through his photography. February of last year was an incredibly inspirational time for him. Last year marked the 40th anniversary of Auroville. UNESCO, a supporter of the Auroville project, also congratulated the city on their special day. The city built in the desert, Auroville inaugurated in 1968. On the same day, it became a land of hope for representatives of 124 different countries around the world. When Auroville was just started in 1968, February 28th, this urn was the focus of a ceremony People came from all over the world with some handful of earth from their country and put it in that urn from all over the planet and from all the states of India.
Auroville was launched with the goal of creating a city in 100 years where 50,000 people could coexist with nature. Many people from various countries come to see the experiments being conducted with their own eyes. The continuous transformation of Auroville was made possible by two people who exist in the hearts of Aurovillians. They are the spiritual leaders of Oroville, Indian philosopher Sri Aurobindo, and his spiritual partner, the mother. If people of goodwill, people who want to contribute to a better future for the whole world and humanity, if they could live together in a township and uh, Sherbindo's ideas could be put into practice in such a setting. Sherbindo's teachings are the inspiration. Mother is the founder and the guide. Every day about 100 guests come to Auroville from around the world to stay here for a certain period of time as a guest. And we give them the information that they need in order to have a good stay in Oroville. And then also information, general information on Oroville and on activities and classes, courses, and also on volunteer opportunities in case they want to participate in the work of Oroville. But I think um, you do notice amongst the people that come here that they have a very uh, positive way of looking at things and are very enthusiastic about being here and discovering new things, trying new things. Uh, so that's a very, very good point about it, I think. This bakery bakes most of the bread produced in Auroville. We met Cho Hein at the bakery, who is a newcomer in Auroville. She's in the process of taking tests to become an Aurovillian. Why did she choose to leave her country and come to Auroville? Puducherry is a city close to Auroville. It is the only former colony of France in India, which was a British colony. India, the land of gods with a population of over 1 billion, is a country with 22 official languages, countless cultures and a diverse mixture of races. So it seems that it wasn't by chance that Auroville's project that embraces people and cultures from all over the world could start in a place like this. Right. 
Artist Kim Song-e is an Auravillian. She is at the flower market from early morning. This morning flower is okay? It's okay, madam. Okay. It is for the Mandara exhibition, which is held every two years. Mandara, the Tonshijange, put Tangshikalyo. Then Sarandri, Tonshijange, Romania, put Tagu, Gron, Chuago, Gron, Punica, Simeon, Hoshindo, Tonshijange. I don't She wishes to greet the people who come to her exhibit with flowers. Kim song Air has been living in Auroville for 10 years, working as a Mandara artist. She has found inner peace through Mandara and believes she can grow and mature through the art. She paints to find the truth. Kim song Air expresses the energy she receives from Auroville through Mandara and wishes to share this with her fellow Aurovillians. The Unity Pavilion is located in the International Zone. There is a special gathering today. Koreans living in Auroville have gathered to meditate. The pavilions are like cultural centers built to promote cultural exchange. There are currently four pavilions in Auroville, including the Indian and Tibetan pavilions. Korea like the Koreans in Auroville, people from other countries wish to build their own country's pavilions to share their culture. The ideals of Auroville, of creating human unity, can be found here. Existing with nature is highly important in Auroville. But just 40 years ago, this place was a wasted red desert.
The prehistory of Auroville can be traced here. The five million year old fossils give us a peek into the past. The typical subtropical climate of the region, which is an average of 40 degrees, was the greatest concern to Auroville. The transformation began with this dam. Before it was built, even the rainwater would flow to the ocean and no plants were able to stay alive. So when I came in 1972, Oroville was a desert and these canyons are all created by erosion. And so the water was, and the soil was washed away. And so we have to learn to harvest the rainwater in different ways. This is one of the ways to let the water just go back into the earth. At the same time, this whole area starts greening up and become a special biotope. The dams played a major role in changing the land, so it could be suitable for plants to grow. The water wets the land and collects underground, which allows various flowers and crops to grow. Auroville is transforming into a gigantic, lush forest city. The easily spotted windmills, with wings made of cloth, also make life possible in Auroville. The wind power created by these windmills is sufficient to mobilize the volume of underground water needed for farming and forestation for a year. In Auroville, I estimate it's between 25 and 30 windmills are there. And yes, they are for pumping water. So it is actually quite working very well. Even in the hottest season, when we need most water, we have most wind. So it is perfect almost. Oreca produces over 100 windmills a year. The metal workshop makes the finest windmills in India. After 40 years of research, they have developed technology that allows pumping with only a light breeze. The technology is not only used in India, but has spread to other countries, such as Uganda and Germany. So far, if you look the last uh, 50, 100 years, there was, yeah, let's call it agreed. Everybody takes as much as he could take. All the resources were taken, the forests were cut down, regardless of what the future is going to be like. Certainly, Auroville cannot have a stand like that. How is this knowledge of new and renewable energy applied to everyday life in Auroville? Some salad is ready. We don't cook. So we are taking all the food which is Auroville is making. Common appliances such as TVs or refrigerators are not to be found in Auroville households. They rarely have more than five electrical appliances and only use what they really need. So maybe now you can just... It depends on your lifestyle, how much energy you want, how much energy you consume and the machinery that you use. So here we have minimized our needs. We are using energy efficient lamps and uh, we are not using fridge and things like that. So 
So here is the battery bank where from the panels the power comes to the battery. New and renewable energy provides the small amounts of electricity that these households require. Such efforts led to the development of the solar cooker. So here you can keep the food for cooking and close it and leave it. Yeah, there is such a, an abundance of energy and natural resources available to us. We just have to recognize them, that it is available. We just need to recognize and start using, start uh, living based on what is available to us. And that makes things very simple. The alternative energy technology used in Auroville is developed here at the Centre for Scientific Research. Various experiments are done so that appliances used in everyday life here could be run on alternative energy. Auroville being an ideal test ground for experimenting with various uh, kinds of techniques, technologies, all kinds of things. It's a test, it's an ideal test ground for almost anything you can think of. This is a hybrid car made of technology developed at CSR. It is an innovative attempt at combining fuel with the energy from solar panels on the car roof. It is still not finished, but we are able to test its mechanical abilities and how, because it's a hybrid vehicle, we are also seeing how we are mixing the fuel and the electric uh, energy that's available from the sun. It is easy to spot motorbikes and bicycles in the streets of Auroville. These vehicles are also run on alternative energy. In visitor center in three vehicles are electric vehicle. But uh, otherwise, our will the many electric vehicles there. Reva, so many vehicles there. Nine hours they are charging after 80 kilometer running one day. There are solar charging stations around Auroville where people can recharge their bicycles and motorbikes. The solar energy saved through the panels on the charging station roof is converted into electricity. Uh, here in the solar kitchen, there's this uh, charging station. So it's with the solar panel, so it's charged with the sun. And I only have to come here and take this, this one and plug in my bicycle. It's very easy. It's also more... Um, more f friendly for the environment that, uh, that uh, to take the, the energy from the electricity than from, from the petrol, petrol station. Auroville's interest in saving the environment can now be seen in the words made in Auroville. Research on alternative modes of transport takes place here at Saracon. This is to deal with environmental damage due to transportation vehicles. Such research is one of Auroville's top priorities. We have about 45 uh, electric cycles and almost uh, 25 to 30 mopeds in Auroville currently. We also variations on um, motorcycles adoption. Then there is also research on um, you know the small scooter that children. 
Auroville, called a breathing laboratory, is working tirelessly to protect the global environment. All over the world, everywhere, we are facing this energy crisis. Yeah? Uh, and everybody is trying to look for different ways of uh, meeting their energy requirements. And uh, it's the same thing within Auroville as well. So instead of having to depend on petrol, which is polluting, and also you know, in the environment, we try and use research alternative, uh, more uh, environment-friendly alternatives. So in light of Auroville, Auroville wants to be you know, the city of the future, of the hope and uh, you know, sustainable living and all that. So that kind of ties in a little bit with that. Needless to say, renewable energy is used in Auroville's community kitchen. On the rooftop of the solar kitchen, there is a 15-meter diameter solar bowl. Over 800 servings of food are cooked a day with the solar energy from the solar bowl. This is a thermal system. We have 11,000 small mirrors which are reflecting the sunlight. So all the reflected light is going onto that coil which is receiving the heat. In the coil there's water flowing. The water turns to steam. Steam goes up and down and back to the uh, kitchen where it's combined with steam from the diesel boiler. It's a hybrid system and they work together to cook the food. This solar bowl was first developed in 1979. As we see, Auroville's efforts to develop alternative energy has not changed and has continued on for 30 years. It changes your way of thinking and makes you more aware of the energy situation of the world and uh, the urgent need to move, find new solutions, to go into more sustainable approaches. More than technological success, what is really important is the shift in consciousness because it changes the way you think. The harmony of people and nature is the most important thing at Sadana Forest. Because of this, they don't eat dairy, eggs or honey. All of their meals are strictly vegan here. All of the ingredients that go in their food is grown in an eco-friendly way. Even the fertilizers are chemical free. They are 100% natural. This is a, our a human manure compost heap. Um, this is a, from the toilet. And you can see it doesn't look like a human a manure. It looks just like compost. And it doesn't... It smells like soil, like wet soil after a rain. Really nice smell. And we have 10 to 12 uh, tons of uh, compost from the toilet every year and that we use to plant our trees. How is the human waste made into fertilizer? This is an alternating uh, dry composting toilet which means that we're separating the pee and the poo. Uh, after uh, using the uh, uh, poo hole we just cover it with Sawdust. After about a month, and through this here, process, the human waste can be used as compost. Already ready, uh, compost. Yeah. Okay. Here's the 
other stick in there. You can see. You can go outside also. It's okay. Oil is a non-renewable energy, and one day it will be finished. What will you do that day? That's why we have to prepare to uh, uh, the lowering of uh, the amounts of oil and to uh, think of alternatives. And this is a very natural, simple and cheap alternative. The electricity used in everyday life here is provided through alternative energy. In order to maximize the efficiency of solar energy, the solar panels are adjusted towards the sun's rays during the day. Many of my volunteers from Sadna Forest have gone out to their home and installed solar panels, installed a hydrodynamic energy or wind uh, turbines. Or, and that's the role of Oroville, to uh, teach people that things are possible. The solar energy is, is very important for us, um, not to, to have to rely on the main power and to, to use a, an energy source that is renewable. It's a great, great way to make us feel good here in Sedona Forest. Fridays at Sedona Forest require more energy than usual. They have movie night in the evening, which is why they are peddling with all their might. <laughs> Every Friday uh, in June 2008, we started the new uh, outreach program of Southern Forest, which is the Echo Film Club. If it's cloudy, if there's no sun, we use electricity from here. If there's enough sun, like today, we don't need to generate from here. Sedana Forest has become very busy with the active participation of people from other neighborhoods. It's 8 o'clock. The environmental movie is being played. A Francis Ford Coppola film is the choice for tonight. It is a film about how human civilization is threatening the very existence of nature. The night grows deeper in Sedana Forest, where the people live according to nature, as everyone is filled with thoughts about the environment. The children are the future leaders of environmental causes. Education for the children who are the future of Oroville is a very important issue. Education in Oroville will not be given for certificates and posts, but for increasing existing faculties and acquiring new ones. All these are the dreams that La School has for its future. This is the Deepanam School, which provides primary level education. But we can't repeat the number twice, okay? The school uses alternative teaching methods that value individual freedom and creativity. The learning is joy and fun, and there is no pressure put on the children. That is more important. And the children, they learn more when they do it by themselves, like if you force them to do, then they close themselves. So they should come out and they should learn. Afternoon classes are the children's favorite time at school. While taking care of the various animals, the children so learn how to live in harmony with nature and the value of life. Amazing speed, yeah? At night. One very important thing also in our school are the animals. In our school we have horses, geese, and snakes, fishes. By keeping animals here, what we try to create in the child is this love for animals, love for nature. That's I was loving it. I like everything in the school. Hmm? Most I like the horses. The classes get the children away from their desks 
and take them to the school farm. Auroville's education has different standards of that of big cities and helps children to develop their inner selves. Yes, what I like is the animals, that we have animals in, that we don't have in Germany. And the classes are not so full, here are just six people in one class. In Germany there was 30 or 30 or 25 or something like this. They are learning things, but not only with academic, they do a lot of projects and everything. They are enjoying school here and I, I feel that they have progressed a lot in this nearly two years. I can see their progress. Yun Song is in the seventh grade in Auroville. It has been five years since he started living here with his family. Yun Song has collected his poetry he wrote since he was eight and is translating them into English himself. The poems, along with his own illustrations, will be made into a book. Auroville's education allows students to take interest on their own and choose their own futures, which creates a great foundation for developing children. Auroville's most important concept is nothing can be taught. To Amuto Karakikoko, to Tesan Pioki of Taran, the current concept in the Imaran, the Ederante, Amuta Markigo, to Edel Dogan, Panchitan, and Kuran of Miganigo, the Sichuro, Edel Run Susuro, Anzoke, Sagidel Ane, the Kanan Song Iraka, to Mukurus Kajuku Kitamune, Kyosayo Karan, Ku Edel Hayagum Kuran Gosul. 일깨워 줄수 있도록 발현될 수 있도록 도와주는 역할이라는 거죠. 그래서 저는 어 이러한 어떤 컨셉이 굉장히 좀 가슴에 와닿았어요. With the vision of coexisting with nature and achieving human unity. Thousand people from 43 different countries have gathered in Auroville, a project to create a universal township. Life is created on barren land, and nature's unlimited gifts are embraced here, where the 100-year happiness project continues on. Auroville is kind of a hope for the future. Mm -hmm. To me, Auroville is really a wonderful gift. For me, Auroville is pure oxygen. It is something where you can breathe. If I live in the outside world, I have to basically follow the rat race. Here in Auroville, I have the possibility to develop myself according to my own ideals. Auroville is a field of progress for me. Auroville is a collective realization. Auroville is my life. Uh, it's my world. It's my home. I'm living here most of my life now. And I'm very um, grateful that I can take part in this very extraordinary experiment. Auroville has many challenges, many possibilities for growth, many opportunities, and that uh, keeps me interested. Uh, and yes, I love to be here. For Auroville, if people could just realize a little bit, a little bit more that art is sacred, I think we we'll have done a very big step forward. One small step. <laughs>
Oroville has 2,000 different meanings to its 2,000 Aurovillians. And if you wish for a life-altering experience, visit Oroville to explore great alternatives.